Hello, my beautiful friends. Today, I'm going to share with you what I eat on a day and not any day, specifically on a weekend, because on the weekends, I usually spend a little more time cooking my food. So are you guys ready? Let's get started. I'm gonna start with showing you how I prepare my favorite breakfast at the time, weekend breakfast that is, gluten-free, sugar-free, and dairy-free crepes, which are absolutely amazing, and it's my mom's recipe, so I gotta give credit to my mama. So these are based on rice and quinoa flour. So I'm gonna add about a little over a cup of rice flour. So it's about 80% rice flour and then 20% quinoa flour. All together, you should have about three quarters of a cup of the flour mixture. Again, 80% rice flour and then 20% quinoa flour. Then I'm gonna dump it all in a bowl. Next, I'm gonna shake my coconut milk and I usually do that so the mixture mixes really well inside but it didn't happen this time so I'm just gonna first mix it in my cup, in my measuring cup because it just helps with mixing it all together later and then I'm gonna add the liquid as well mix it a little bit and you get about the same thing you get about three quarters of a cup and then I'm just gonna pour that into the flour mixture and then I'm gonna need the same amount of water and I'm gonna pour that all into the bowl now I'm gonna mix everything with a whisk to make sure it's nice and mixed. And the last thing I'm gonna add to this is three eggs. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna whisk it all together as well. And you'll see it changes the color a little bit. Now, if you don't eat eggs, you can add egg replacer here. Once everything is mixed together, Alex takes over <laughs> because he's really great at flipping crepes on a pan. He usually starts with taking organic coconut oil and taking a bit of a napkin and sort of spreading it on a pan and then just letting the pan heat up. I think that's really paramount because if you do this on a warm pan, it's really not gonna work. So wait for it to heat up and then you take a full ladle of the mixture and slowly pour into the pan and you'll have this round shape of a crepe, which is great. And you'll You'll see the little bubbles appear on top wait about a minute and then insert your spatula carefully under and flip the crepe i know it sounds easy but it really not that easy that's why i let alex do the work i can still do it too but sometimes they break or they don't look so nice so i let alex take care of it now once in a while what I'll do here is I'll add a little bit of raw coconut nectar which is a great sugar alternative and it just adds a really nice sweet taste to the crepes. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do it one more time. So a full ladle of this mixture, wait for it to bubble up for one side to dry out, carefully insert it and flip it. Beautiful, it looks wonderful. And then you just stack them up. On the side, I usually slice some berries if I have some. So today I have some strawberries and blueberries. Now time to enjoy all of this goodness. And I will show you how I usually eat this. Not that it needs any special instructions, but I usually place a few berries on my crepe and then I will take the maple syrup and then drizzle the crepe with some maple syrup. And then just slice it up and enjoy it. Mmm, it is so good, guys. It's soft and crunchy all at the same time. And here's Alex enjoying his crepe a little too much. It's so good. We make sure to make these crepes at least once every week or once every two weeks because they're just amazing. All right, for lunch today, I'll be making one of my current favorites and I call this the okra bowl. I'm gonna start with making some quinoa and with most quinoa, you have to first rinse it or wash it unless it specifically says on the box of your quinoa that it's been previously rinsed. So I'm gonna just rinse it with some water and then you, if you have a strainer, it will help you because it'll be easier. And then I'm just gonna strain it and just make sure to rinse it a little more with some water in the strainer as well. Alternatively, you can also soak it, but I usually forget to do that prior to cooking. And then you cook quinoa the same way you would cook rice. So one part of quinoa and two parts of water. I used half a cup of quinoa, so I'm gonna use one cup of water. 
Now I'm gonna add some olive oil to my pan, a little bit of sea salt, and I usually first fry my quinoa for about a minute or two before I add the water. That's kind of the trick I do. Um, you don't really have to do that, but I feel like it just adds a little bit of crunchiness to the quinoa when it's ready, which I really like. So I'm gonna bring quinoa to the boil, and once it starts boiling, I'm just gonna put the heat down and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. That's all it takes. And now we're gonna start with the okra dish. I'm gonna start with slicing some onions. First slicing and then dicing them and transferring them to a pan. And here you can use any cooking oil you prefer. I'm gonna use some olive oil. And I'm gonna start frying it on a medium heat. In the meantime, I'm gonna start slicing my okra. I'm gonna first remove the stems, as you can see, and then just start slicing it into small chunks. And if you've never had okra, I encourage you to try it. It's one of my favorite vegetables at the time. I just love the texture. I think it looks like a bit of an alien, to be honest, but it tastes really interesting and it's so good for you. It's full of healthy fiber. It's really great for that digestion and actually has a lot of antioxidants. Now, what really makes this dish special is the spices I'm gonna be using. I usually eyeball everything, but you know, I try to make for this video, I try to figure out how much I add of everything. So it's a teaspoon of turmeric, and then half a teaspoon or sometimes a little more of cayenne pepper or cayenne powder. And then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon, maybe a little more of cumin seeds, and then brown mustard seeds. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of that as well. Mmm, it's already starting to smell amazing. And now I'm gonna add the okra to this mixture and mix it all nicely together. As I'm cooking, I'm gonna need to add more olive oil and more sea salt. Now my quinoa is ready, so I'm just gonna let it sit there for a moment. In the meantime, I'm gonna also slice some tomatoes because I'm gonna be adding it to the okra dish. Then I'm gonna transfer the tomatoes to the okra and mix it all nicely together. All right, now on to making my bowl. I start with the quinoa at the bottom. So I'm just gonna transfer the quinoa into the bowl and then I'm gonna transfer a lot, a lot of okra on top of the quinoa. Mmm, so steamy and smells divine. All right, time to have some lunch. I'm gonna start with a little gratitude as always. Okay, blow on the food, don't get burned. <laughs> Sometimes I rush and I burn my tongue. Mmm, it's so good, absolutely love it. Alex and I usually chat and enjoy our meal. Alex loves that dish as well. All right, at about 4 p.m. it's time for my afternoon snack. And what I'm gonna be making today is a mango protein shake. I'm gonna slice the mango in two and then use my spoon to remove all the flesh from the mango. I love mangoes. Anybody likes mangoes, leave me a comment down below. Then I'm gonna add a cup of water. I have some leftover berries from breakfast, so I'm just gonna toss that in there as well, but it's not necessary. And then I'm using this protein shake that my holistic doctor recommended. I've been trying out different brands, and some of them are not really pleasant, but this one is really great so far, so I'm loving it. It's pure pea protein shake. And then I'm gonna blend it all together in a blender. It looks nice and peachy now. <laughs> I'm gonna transfer everything to mugs and enjoy it. It's actually very, very delicious and you can't even taste the protein shake. You want some? <laughs> all right, now it's time to cook some dinner. And Alex and I have salads without dinner almost every single day, so I usually start with a salad. Today I have some celery, so I'm gonna slice some celery and then transfer it to a bowl. I'm gonna slice some red pepper, nice and thin, and then transfer it into a bowl as well. And then I'm gonna slice green pepper as well. And all these veggies I get from this local farm shop, so they're absolutely delicious and organic, all of them. So tomatoes also into the bowl. Avocado, so the way I slice avocado is usually slice it in the middle, remove the seed, slice it inside, and then I just take a spoon and remove everything with a spoon. And then I'm gonna peel and slice my cucumber. And olives really add a nice touch and a bit of salty flavor to the salad, which is delicious. 
For my dressing, I'm gonna add some cilantro because I really love the taste and smell of cilantro. It just makes me happy. It has something in it that really attracts me. And also I'm gonna be adding some lemon juice and some olive oil as a dressing and a little bit of sea salt as well. Now time to mix it all together to make sure all the flavors and all the veggies are mixed together. And now it's time to make our main course. And today we have a pasta dish, but not any kind of pasta dish. This is spiralized butternut squash pasta, which is amazing. I don't have a spiralizer at home, so I usually just get it at a grocery store. You can pretty much buy this at any health food store like Whole Foods or Planet Organic here in the UK. I'm gonna add some olive oil, sea salt on the pan, and then transfer all the pasta, quote unquote, into the pan and mix it all together for a few minutes on medium heat. Then for my sauce, I'm gonna be making tomato clams. So I'm gonna transfer these clams from a jar and some of them are in tomato sauce and some of them are in olive oil sauce. Mix it all together. And I'm also gonna add some herbs for a nice flavor. Now my pasta dish is ready in about five to seven minutes. So I'm gonna start transferring the pasta into the bowls. And then on top, I'm gonna put my clam sauce. And then on top, I'm gonna garnish it with chopped fresh herbs. And again, I'm adding cilantro because I absolutely love cilantro. Again, starting with a little gratefulness prayer. And now we're ready to eat. <laughs> It looks so beautiful and it actually kind of tastes like a pasta. That's the crazy thing. Mmm, delicious. Are you guys hungry yet? <laughs> Today, for a late night snack, I had some leftover of kale from the previous day. So what I'm gonna do is make some kale chips, which is like my all time favorite snack. I'm gonna link a recipe here and down below. So if you want a step-by-step -step recipe of kale chips, then go there. But I'm quickly gonna guide you through what you need to do. So I'm gonna add some olive oil, sea salt, sesame seeds, sprinkle it all on top and then mix it all together with my hands. And then I'm gonna transfer it all onto a pan, which already had some parchment paper on it. So you wanna lay it out nicely and evenly. And then just bake it for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how strong your oven is. When they come out, they should be crunchy, but not burnt. So that's something to look out for. Ready to enjoy our snack. And this is so delicious and nutritious and scrumptious and actually very satisfying. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more What I Eat In A Day videos, leave me a comment. I love you guys very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!